Hello and welcome to this latest video in computational finance. Now, after having talked about portfolio theory, that is the classical portfolio theory put forward by Markowitz, we will now talk about the capital asset pricing model and how it is related to portfolio optimization. And because we want to dig deeper into the mathematical methods for optimization, we'll talk about optimization and more precisely convex optimization later on in section 3.4. Now we've seen portfolio theory and portfolio theory basically tells us that we should look at expected returns and volatility as the two main parameters. Obviously this has to do with the assumption of normal distribution where the normal distribution is governed by those two parameters, expected value and volatility. And we now want to dig deeper and see how portfolio theory is also related to portfolio optimization and the capital asset pricing model, basically one of the uh, first models that asked how can we price stocks, assets in a financial market with arbitrage free uh, prices. And we'll talk about this later in probably the next video. Now, We'll start with portfolio optimization. You remember that we uh, characterized assets and portfolios by their expected value and their volatility. If you can understand German, you can also read about this in the um, Albrecht and Maurer textbook on investment and risk management. You can see the relevant pages here, but you can also find it in any other uh, English textbooks, for example. Um, we've already seen that in classical portfolio theory by Markowitz, we get the efficient frontier, that is the upper egg shell of the um, uh, solution space that um, we get for all possible portfolios. We have an efficient frontier that um, tells us which portfolios are efficient in the sense that they are not dominated in either expected return or volatility. Now we cannot really decide which portfolio an investor chooses along the efficient frontier because this depends on the individual preferences. Some investors might actually favor a higher expected return and a higher volatility, whereas others would like to have a lower expected return for a lower volatility. So as a result, we actually have to look at a preference function or a utility function that gives us a utility or a preference value uh, based on those two parameters, expected return and volatility. So for example, this could be a function like this where we have the expected return, we subtract the volatility scaled up by a factor of A and A is obviously a risk aversion parameter that governs how detrimental volatility C. Then the individual optimal investment program is simply given by we want to maximize this preference function, we want to maximize the utility over the portfolio weights x1 through xn under the condition that the portfolios that we choose, so mu and sigma, are actually part of the set of allowed mu sigma combinations. So it's a it's a feasible portfolio that is uh, this constraint here. Now we look at two securities and we take the preference function that we just uh, wrote down. So expected return minus A times volatility. And we've already derived the functions for the portfolio expected return and the portfolio uh, variance and standard deviation in one of the previous videos. So we just put it in here and we have mu2 plus mu1 minus mu2 times x. Remember that if we have a two case, sorry, a two security case, we don't need n weights. We simply take x and one minus x for the second security. So that's quite simple. And minus a times the variance of r and the variance is given by sigma one squared x squared plus one minus x squared sigma 2 squared plus 2x 1 minus x sigma 1 2. So this is the covariance and this is the standard formula from general statistics 
on the volatility or rather the variance in this case of a linear combination of two random variables. In this case, it's a convex combination of two securities. We take the first derivative with respect to x. The first derivative is given by this rather long equation. We set it equal to zero and then solve for x, just as we would have done in high school, and we get x equal to 2a divided by variance plus variance minus two covariance. And if we now let a go to infinity, we actually can see that we get the maximum, uh, sorry, the minimum variance portfolio. So this is uh, happening with a going to infinity. So if we have infinite risk aversion, we get the minimum variance portfolio. Now, please note that actually we shouldn't optimize over the set of all feasible portfolios, but actually we should only consider those portfolios, mu star, sigma star, that form part of the set of efficient portfolios. So the optimal portfolio should be on the efficient frontier. So actually the optimization should be realized via M star and not M. In many cases, this above stated problem of optimization is modified in practice because actually in practice you have a lot more constraints. You have, have many more constraints and even if you don't have a preference function with a risk aversion parameter, you still have, um, for example, optimization with respect to an excess return. You want uh, a certain return that goes beyond, for example, the return of the S&P 500 or an MSCI, MSCI World Index. So this is the first thing you can do. You can try to optimize with respect to a benchmark. So you choose a benchmark like the DAX 30, S&P 500, and what you do then is you don't maximize a preference function, but you say, okay, maximize the excess return of your portfolio with respect to the benchmark. And then, of course, this is simply given by the portfolio expected return minus the expected return of the benchmark might be that actually those weights that certain stocks are the same here that you also have some stocks that are also included in the benchmark but you want to have a variance that is equal to the benchmark and all those weights should add up to one now the weights of the securities in the benchmark they are obviously given by the construction of the index they are predetermined and fixed but you want to choose those x1, x2, xn's here to optimize your excess return. So this is optimization in relation to a benchmark. When it comes to the optimization of a portfolio, even more often you are actually interested in not just controlling the volatility, but you also want to do something we call a safety first approach and thus you take a shortfall probability. So this could be the shortfall probability that this, the probability that the return is below a certain threshold. And as you can imagine, I've chosen a threshold with a notation Q alpha, and this will later on be the alpha quantile of, for example, the profit and loss distribution. So you take a shortfall probability and then what you do is, for example, you require that the shortfall probability is smaller or equal than a certain other threshold. So if we demand that the shortfall probability lies under a threshold, this will be equivalent to this quantile being smaller or equal than another um, quantile. You introduce this, uh, you can actually assume that the quantiles and the return distribution follow a certain parametric distribution. And in the following, we just assume normally distributed returns. So it fits right into our model with mu and sigma as the only relevant parameters. We have the Z quantile. X is assumed to be normally distributed. Then X alpha is a quantile. And you know from simple statistics that the X quantile of any given standard, uh, sorry, normal distribution, is just given by mu plus sigma times Z quantile of the standard normal distribution. And this requirement that the quantile is slower or equal than this here is simply then 
is related to this inequation here that mu has to be larger or equal than the quanta plus z quanta times sigma. So it's very simple actually to transform this given the assumption of a normal distribution. How does it look like? Well, if we control shortfall risk, for example, we introduce a constraint that is a linear equation here, actually an inequation, so we are only looking at the portfolios above this line. And as you can see, if we choose, for example, a confidence level of 75, 80 or 90 percent, we are moving this line upwards, we're tilting it upwards, and we are restricting ourselves to, for example, um, portfolios that are above this solid line here or portfolios above this pointed line here. This is the effect of a shortfall risk constraint that we introduce and as always with optimization under constraints it's like we have a function in here and we put in a constraint and we are cutting off one half of the space and in this case we are looking at the portfolio um, above this inequation. If we have a confidence of 80% and we are requiring a minimum return of 3, 6 and 9%, then obviously uh, this constraint only moves up and we have uh, constrained our set of feasible portfolios and we now have to optimize uh, in this um, upper part of the plot. Okay. So this is a very short description of optimization under practical constraints. In the next video, we'll talk about the case of several periods where we don't just have one period, but actually we require the return to be above a certain threshold on average or in every period. And this will be done in the next video. So as always, everyone, Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and be well. We'll see us next time. Thank you.